Welcome to ZapTest Tutorials. In this tutorial, we will create a simple test for searching flights. Take a look at our demo booking page. Here we have three combo box elements, one data picker control, and a search button. We will create a special view for each of the combo box elements and for the date picker control to select the right destination. Let's start with the from control. Click the scan GUI button. We should scan our view with the combo box opened. To do that, hold the control key on your keyboard and click on the combo box to open it. Then release the control key and click anywhere in the application to scan it. Enter the name for the application and for the view. Here we need only one object, the label from. We will select this object and remove the rest of the objects. Now we should create a related object which we will use later in the test to perform a click on it to extend the combo box drop down list. To select the item in the combo box list, we can use the Zap Test special object type, list. List has a special parameter, number of rows. Our combo box list has four rows. All list objects should have a parent object. In our case, it is the label from. Let's add steps to our project. Our test should start from the launching of the browser application. It should open the browser and navigate to demo.zaptest.com forward slash book web page. Then we should click on the first combo box to open it and select the departure city. To select it, we will use the list object. This object has a special method, the click row, which has a text parameter of the item value. In this test, we will use data table for all used parameters. Let's add a new parameter, from, to our data table. Let's choose New York as our departure city. Then use this data in the click row method. We also parameterize browser to data table for cross-browser execution in the future. Let's run the test. Zap test will now open the booking page and select New York in the departure field. We should repeat these same steps for the next combo box control. Click Scan to create a new view and remove all objects except the label 2. Now create relative objects. One regular for activating the combo box dropdown. And another one, List, for selecting the item value. This combo box item has three lines. We should set this number to the rows field. We should also set the relative object for list as the label 2. Let's return to our test. We should add a new parameter to our data table, destination. Activate our combo box. And select the destination. Now we have our destination selected. The next element is the date picker control. Just like we did before, we should create a new view for the date picker control. To make the date picker control visible, use the control key trick that we learned earlier and scan the page. Here we should remove all the objects except the date label, and then we should create one special object for opening the date picker. In this tutorial, we will select just one date. In our next lesson, we will show you how to change the month and add some advanced logic to the calendar. For working with calendars, ZapTest has a special object type, table. The table object can represent any table and has two parameters, rows and columns. In our case, date picker control has seven columns and five rows, and the list object table should have a parent object. Let's set it to the date label. time to add some script steps around the date picker control. We will need to open a calendar and select the 28th day of the current month. Let's add a new parameter to our data table and set it to 28. When we enter a number, the data table will represent it as a numeric format. Each cell has a context menu where we can set different properties. One of these properties is format, so we should set the format of the date to text, because the method we will use only accepts text data. 
Now we can activate the date picker by clicking on it. Let's add the table object and use the method click cell. The last thing we should do is to click on the search button and collect the results. Let's create a new view for the results. Scan UI of the web page with the results. Here we should keep the following objects, the search button, the search label for detecting results, and the flight label for collecting information about the flights. Truncate the search results label. We will use the OCR partial mode to detect only the first part of the string. To do this, open the Extended Properties panel and change the recognition type to Partial OCR. This will allow us to run universal result checking, which will not be influenced by the date or the flight information. We will also add a new related object for collecting flight numbers. Here we should update a property, the text color, which should be set to white. In the test, we will click on the search button and use the exist method to check the results. Then we will use the get text method to get text data from the object. This method returns current text data of the object, which we could keep in a variable. Let's set up the if else conditional statement to check if search results appear. Then we will collect and save the flight number to our report using the custom report method, which we already used in the first lesson. We will add the else conditional statement and use the custom report method to report an error. The last line of our test should close the browser window. Let's run the test. SAP test will select the destinations, change the date, click on the search button and then it will save the flight numbers to the report and close the browser. Let's open the results. Here we can see detailed information about all the steps taken in searching a flight. Please visit zaptest.com and get started today.